So we sat there, and uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, came a big, hard thud. The ship started to shake, it started to tremble, and we immediately looked at each other, which you generally do these things, and we knew we were in trouble, but we didn't know what kind of trouble we were in. So immediately I started up topside, which is the main deck, and that's about 20 feet up from where we were in the dunning room. When I got up there, I looked back aft, and as I put out my arm, and you look down your arm, you can see the end, you see your fingers. Well, when I looked down there, the fingers would be the end of the ship, and I looked down, I couldn't see it. The end of the ship had gone. And then it came back up again. Then it went down. We knew we were in trouble, but we didn't know what, how serious it was. So immediately, as we came out of Dunnage Room on a port side, our room door was a few feet away. We went into our rooms, grabbed our life jackets, came back out, looked back aft again and sensed that we couldn't make it back to the lifeboats. We crossed over to the starboard side. Again, we looked and determined then our only chance was the life raft because the way she looked, she started to come apart. As we raced up under the pilot house deck, there were several other fellows up there, and Elmer Fleming, the first mate, he was on the radio phone giving his mayday message. He kept repeating, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is a Carl D. Bradley. We are 12 miles southwest of Gull Island. We are breaking into and sinking. Anybody in the area come to our aid or our help. I don't recall the last part of it. But he kept repeating this Mayday continually until his phone went dead. And when it went dead, you could see, looking back aft on the pilot's deck, you could see the ship coming apart on a port side, because apparently the keel had broke, which is the backbone, and there's nothing to hold the ship together except the plates that are built onto the uh, keel and the ribbing. And as she started to come apart, we could see cables snapping. At the time that uh, the ship was breaking apart, Elmer hollered for someone to get the life raft ready. And there were several of us up on the pilot house deck, and uh, nobody made a move, so I did. I jumped on a life raft, and I untied it. I, I untied the oars because it's secured. I was on a raft yet, and the raft was in its cradle. And a huge wave, this is what I have a theory of, came up as we was, hit us so hard as we was going down, it just washed us right off onto the port side. When I come up out of the water, I took, uh, not knowing anything around me, I come up, I took one, as I was swimming, took one movement with my arm, and I hit the life raft. We're bouncing, we're out there in the water, and the forward end is now gone. It's completely disappeared underwater. The after end is still floating. It's on even keel. It, it has full lights smoke coming out of a uh, smokestack, just as if it was normally under the way, but it, we were in two pieces. The forward's gone, the after end's floating, the forward's on the raft, we were watching it. All of a sudden, the ship, being an even keel, it tipped, wheel up, straight up, and then started to go underwater. And when the white part of the cabins which would be where the area of the boiler room, when that hit that ice-cold water, they exploded into a red ball of flame and black smoke, and it kept descending, and all this time its lights were on, and when it went underwater, everything was complete dark then. So we were really at the mercy of the sea then, and we kept bouncing around, riding the waves, and sometime during the night, we was riding these waves, and we'd go up a wave, a wave would break, the raft would tip over. We lost one person. And as time went on, we'd go up another wave, tip over, we lost another person. There were airplanes flying out, dropping flares. We could see the flares, but they're always off in a distance from us. Apparently, we were drifting quite fast, and we were drifting to the northeast all this time. 
and when daylight came, I found out from the captain of the Sundew that uh, they were going to search a little bit south, and they determined uh, we're going to make one more swing north because of the way the sea is going, the current and the winds, possibly they might find something. And as they started heading north towards Trout and High Island, a lookout spotted something. And the captain remarked that uh, he thought that's two hunters of some sort out there in this kind of weather. They shouldn't be here. But as they got closer, they saw there was two guys. They saw the raft. And then they knew that we were of the Bradley crew. 